Ladies and gentlemen, esteemed speakers and participants, my name is Claudia Zapardel. I am a Romanian member of the European Parliament and member of the Transport and Tourist Committee and also co-chair of the Tourist Development and Cultural Heritage Intergroup. I regret not to be able to address you in person today. However, I am very grateful to the European Travel Commission for the invitation to speak about the priorities for the tourist sector in the next years. I will share with you today the key priorities I see essential to keep the competitiveness of the tourism industry and Europe as the number one tourist destination. Tourism is playing a central role in our legislative. This can be illustrated by the creation of the Parliamentary Intergroup. It's not easy to create intergroups in our parliament. It requires the support of at least three political groups. But in the process, I managed to obtain the support of the group leaders and 140 MEPs from all the national delegation and almost all political groups. That sends a very strong message of support from our parliament to the tourism industry. Our intergroup raises awareness to the tourism industry and and provides a platform for discussions between the EU institutions, representatives from the member state, private sector and civil society. In return, the intergroup helps to shape an integrated approach to the promotion of European tourism. In the past year, I met with many stakeholders from, from the public and private tourism sector. The discussions we had, the events I organized and the debates in our intergroup points to the following priorities. The first priority relates to raising the profile of tourism industry in Europe. While the tourism industry generates over 10% of the EU GDP, this contribution is often neglected by our institutions. As an example, tourism has no permanent budget line in the EU budget. Moreover, it is visibly within the European Commission is decreasing. That is reflected by the cuts in the budget and staff members in the DGs where tourism is being dealt with. That is not the right way if we want to keep Europe as the world number one destination for tourists. In the European Parliament, we are ready to help. As member of the Transport and Tourist Committee, I tabled amendments to the 2016 budget report to restore the budget of programs under COSME for promoting tourism. Moreover, together with my colleagues, we have secured the allocation of half a million euro to the EU budget for 2016 exactly for the promotion of Europe in the world. That is done by the pilot project Destination Europe. Another initiative I am promoting in this regards is the nomination of a European Year on Cultural Heritage and Tourism. This initiative shows how important it is to promote, protect and preserve Europe's touristic sites and cultural heritage. This initiative also helps to raise awareness to the economic contribution of the tourism and culture, cultural industries. That is reflected in job creation, promotion of SMEs and the development of infrastructure. Placing tourism in the heart of the EU agenda will provide the means to achieve our targets and also raise the profile of the tourism industry in the EU and non-European markets. Another priority I would like to mention refers to the need to develop tourism in areas that are less known but are still rich in culture and attraction. For example, Maramureș, a region in North Romania which offers beautiful landscapes, unique food and cultural traditions. While there is a high touristic potential in this region, the public transportation and infrastructure is very poor. Improving links and connectivity will contribute to the economic and social development of the region and country as a whole. Although I use Maramureș as an example, there are plenty more regions across Europe with the same problem. We must take more actions to upgrade railway connections, complete road and highway development and have more directly connected flights. Being a member of the Transport and Tourist Committee, I work on the issue of connectivity to remote areas. My recent work as the SND Rapporteur on the White Paper on Transport proves that. In my work on this file, I stress the need to prioritize the EU policies on better connectivity in the EU, mostly to remote areas. I am devoted to continue working together with my colleagues on this issue on fu in future dossiers.
The third, but not the least priority I would like to mention, relates to the shortage of skilled labor in the tourism industry. As I mentioned earlier, the tourism industry is an important source for job creation in Europe. The industry has the capacity to help reduce unemployment, mainly for young people. It also brings back to the labor force the young adult unemployed and gives work-life balance to parents, but more needs to be done to deal with the needs of industry and social rights of workers at the same time. We need more investment in quality employment to make the tourism sector more attractive to students and graduates. We also have to look at the needs of the tourism industry industry by providing high quality training opportunities to people employed in the sector. In this context, more efforts are needed to make tourism a high-level education discipline within the social science branch. Here I propose to create a European Academy for training of workers in the tourism industry. Such institution is vital to eliminate skill gaps and increase the relevance of vocational training. The best day for Europe to tackle the challenges faced by the tourism industry is within a change of policy. We need a new approach to replace the outdated 2010 communication on European tourism. I welcome the eight common actions to foster the European tourism industry outlined by the Commissioner Biankowska in her speech in Madrid this year. But I also believe that the right way forward is to renew and update the Commission's strategy on tourism. To remind you, the 2010 document does not reflect the changes brought by the digital agenda or the sharing economy. It does not reflect the EU enlargement or the growing competition with non-European markets. We need an inclusive strategy to deal with these challenges and transform them into opportunities. Ladies and gentlemen, besides involving 2 million businesses, providing 10 million jobs, the tourism industry is one of the few sectors which still grows and creates jobs despite the economic crisis. We cannot turn our back to these numbers. In order to preserve the contribution of the sector, we need to ensure its visibility in daily policies defined by our institution and na national governments. We need to ensure that access is provided to all the touristic destinations across Europe for truly exploring its potential. Last but not least, we need to guarantee a degree of human capital in the sector while taking into consideration the needs of the industry. These three priorities will help set the means to bring more tourists into Europe while supporting the growth of our industry and our economy. I would like to thank you for your attention and I wish you a fruitful debate. Thank you.